All right, we're gonna go get some ingredients to cure the bacon. All right. <laughs> so we've got to have uh, three eggs, three eggs, brown sugar, salt, and then we have black pepper, cayenne pepper. Two pounds. We're gonna do light brown sugar. And then we're gonna do table salt, that's a pound. He needs some fine black pepper, cayenne powder, two, eight, two ounces of black pepper. And what is this going to be for, curing so, the bacon? Yep, the spices, yep, for the, the bacon, and then they'll cure it, and I guess in the smokehouse, probably. Mm -hmm. Then we'll have to come back later and get more ingredients for, uh, we do the link sausage, and it's our favorite. I think it's my favorite, for sure, and I'm my sister's, and um, so we told them to cut up most of the roast and everything for the link sausage. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, take this down there. I think it's warmed up a little bit. Yeah. So I showed y'all before, this is the smokehouse. And uh, I'm sure after a while they'll put a fire in there and smoke will be rolling out of the roof. Right there from that smokehouse? Yep. In a large, kind of large scale like we do, I don't know of anybody that's doing it. That was fast. <laughs> I work fast. <laughs> and that was exact, that wasn't to be doubled or? Uh, you, can, you can add a little bit to it because we've also got the jowl to do so, but it's generally, the recipe, generally it covers the two bacon well. Okay. But you can add maybe 25% to all that, something like that. Well, I did it exact, so if I need to make more. Maybe another four or five. So if, if, if you have, well, you have it, okay. So yeah, well, that's two pounds of brown sugar, just give us another, I don't know, give us a half pound. That way we've got something left. And, and a little bit of the spices too, yes, uh-huh. All right, okay. Sorry, I should have said that. <laughs> Heather is making chili. Yes, I am uh, frying up some, Holly likes to add sausage to her chili, so yeah. I had run out of room in my pan. So now I'm doing that. And we have some cracklings heating up over here. And I'll take these up. That's from the pig yesterday? Yep. Well, it's for some they have put up, but just oh, to okay. cook some and see what it's like. Mm -hmm. Here's some that are done. Yep, they're really good on bread. I like to eat them in oatmeal. And Doreen was saying she likes to eat them just on toast. So the cracklings go on the toast? Yep. Right. They're on the toast. Oh yeah, I added some more. Just don't get it though. Ooh, it's hot. You want to drain the as much grease as you can because a little bit will still stay on them. And so Aunt Doreen was making bread. She greased her pans with some of the grease we had added in here. It's pretty much lard. So is this right. the crack ones right here, Heather? Yep. All right. And you're just making more or what? Yep. Okay. We're gonna take this down there. Here, Holly, these for are a little brunch. Done. Let me add these. Okay. I'll just wait now. Here's your bowl. Add some salt to the lard. 
right? <laughs> yes, yes, right. <laughs> I like mine chewy, crispy, however, but most people sound like, like them. I think dad likes them chewy too. I think most people like them more crispy. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna try to crisp them up a little bit. And this is the sausage we actually, it's from the last hog we butchered. We're gonna add this to our chili. Mm. <laughs> and have some bacon to fry up too, I guess. Yeah, as soon as we get those crack ones out. I think they'll be good to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is going where? We're going to take this down there just for a little breakfast snack. Okay. Uh, this toast and breakfast. Right. And this spoon. Yeah. To take to mm -hmm. serve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. I'm going to put some bacon in here. This is also some bacon that I think Holly and Nathan have put up. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna just fry some of that up. Well, that's, you guys cut it very nice, Holly. Sometimes it's thicker, thinner. I like mine thinner. Mm -hmm. I love bacon. Mm -hmm. We put it on the freezer and let it. Um, we can make bacon donuts now, so. Yes, make it bacon. <laughs> we put that in the freezer and let it kind of, not frozen solid, but just a little bit frozen, and it makes it really easy to say. where they do the pork mm -hmm. sauce, they, right. it hardens them up a little bit to fly. So this bacon has been salt cured yep. and everything. Mm -hmm. They cure it and then put it out and mm, that looks good. Yep. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. They'll be full by the time we eat lunch because we're gonna keep <laughs> taking them back. <laughs> John won't mind. Okay. <laughs> he says parts of the job, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> You'll need to that pan. Put it in the pan and get it hot, Holly. So the most important thing about using a cast iron skillet and cornbread is you want your skillet hot. So we're gonna go ahead and put this in the oven and let it heat up. Okay, Holly, could you explain to us what cracklins are? Yeah. So cracklins are actually it's the solid bits of meat that come to the top when you render lard. And so there is a little bit of fat in here, but it's, it's little bits of meat. And how you make these, uh, you put them in a pan and um, you just slowly heat them up so the fat melts and then you drain off the fat and we, we save the grease, the fat that comes off of them for to put in our bread or to brush the top of our bread, it's really good, or toast. And then you put the crack ones back in the pan and just kind of, uh, Fry them until they're a little bit crispy, and you eat them on toast. Put some salt and pepper and eat them on toast. And I actually just took some down there to where they're butchering, and they were gone in just a minute. So, so we're actually going to put these in cornbread too. We're going to make some cornbread with our chili, and we're going to add some of this in our cornbread mix and bake it. And it's supposed to be really good. So, I think it will be. Mm -hmm. So Heather's going to make some cracklings. Probably what's on this already. I always like to learn new things. We'll put plenty in there so we have. Those will fry up and cook. Put them in cornbread or on a slice of toast. Yep. I'm just gonna check the spread here. All right, so we are gonna make some crackling cornbread. And this is my niece Heidi, and we're gonna start with some eggs. Um, and we've got some yellow and white cornmeal mixed, and some milk. I'm not gonna add that quite yet. So let's go ahead and add some of these cracklings. 
we're just gonna put a couple good spoonfuls in there. Alright. And then uh, two, well, do about three and a half cups of cornmeal. Just a little more. Like that. Yeah. Okay. And we'll just add some milk. Just kind of get it to the right consistency and then we'll pour it in a hot skillet. So a lot of the a lot of People will come in the store and ask about cracklins because we have cracklins in the store for sale. And they'll say, what do you do with cracklins? Or So one of the main, the most popular um, ways to use cracklins is in cornbread. And I had never had it until just, just recently I made some. And it is super good. It adds a, um, a kind of a meaty flavor. Um, of course, you know, there's homemade lard in it. So that's, what, that's the oil we used for this recipe. This is the homemade lard with the cracklins. So I think this is gonna be super delicious. So it needs to cook for about how long? I think it's 25 minutes. So, so we're gonna make it about 25 minutes. Yeah. That oven is pretty hot, so it may be 15, 15 minutes. So I don't usually time much. It drives my husband crazy. Because I don't time it. I just he said, Well, how do you know it's done? And I just say, I'm it's just done. No, it's done. <laughs> and I can smell it. I can smell when I'm baking bread. I can smell when it's done. You know, it's just uh takes practice and experience. All right, we're gonna see if this cornbread is ready. I'm gonna me a toothpick. Perfect. Perfect. Just yes. take it out. Crackling cornbread. I did it with a plate. Alright, here we go. No, I can't do it. It's hot. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. I'm not used to such a big uh Oh, oh beautiful. My goodness. <laughs> How pretty. <laughs> I'm gonna go over and start working on the curing. We're just about to start curing. Yes, I think maybe a little bit of meat can be whittled off of that, and then of course that. Yeah. Oh, right here, right here. You're making scrapple too, aren't you? Yes, after the liverwurst. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, we're gonna go over here and we're gonna cure these bacon. So these are the bacon that are trimmed up a little earlier. The jowl and Holly has mixed up the. Uh, the ingredients to that recipe, and that's brown sugar, salt, black pepper, a bunch of, bunch of stuff. Recipes around here somewhere, so just got it all mixed up. And so, um, 
This is Dad's Dad's tub that he had here. Got it at an auction sale somewhere. I don't know what it originally was, but he thought it would be a good piece to cure his meat in. So, and it is. So I'm gonna set the pan down here, and I'm gonna just put a little layer on the bottom of it. And then I'm gonna get a bacon here. And I'm gonna lay it down, lay it in there, skin down, right on those seasonings there, right on that. And then I'm gonna just put a bunch of this on here. And this is the way Dad showed me to do it. You just take it and you just sort of rub it in, so that all the surface has got some on it. See, it's got a pretty good layer there, and that's going to serve as the coating for this next one. And I'm going to lay it in there, skin down, right on top of that bacon. So the bottom's already got the seasonings on it. And we'll pile a bunch more on there, like that, and just start rubbing it in. Are you, are you raising some pigs now? I've not started any for next year yet, but uh, I'm almost through for this year. So, um, because that I'm not legal to, to do the processing, the slaughtering myself, I have to go to a slaughterhouse. And since COVID, it has been very difficult to get slaughter dates. And so all my slaughter dates are taken are taken up. I'm done for this year, and I can't get any more slaughter dates until January of 2024. And then I have some more slaughter dates in March of 2024. I'm going to put the rest of this on here and just cover it all up good. But uh, I will be getting those pigs real soon and raise them and have them ready for those slaughter dates. And and then I have a whole whole line of customers that are buying these and then I'm always looking for new customers. They call me and, and the way I do it, uh, when a customer calls me, I tell them all the conditions, how I raise them, and what I get for them, how I take them to the slaughterhouse and all that. And I do not take any money down on them. I, when a customer tells me that they want a half or a whole hog or a half or whole beef, I take their good word for it. I do not, I do not take a down payment. I trust people and it's done well for me. It, uh, it helps us to be sustainable on the farm, to direct market and there is a lot more work goes into raising these animals and, and uh, taking them to the processor. There's a lot more care goes into it. But I get just a little bit more for it. In the end, I think it's very compatible with what stores get for their animals, for their meat. But this has absolutely no growth hormones or antibiotics in it. I do, I am not 100% organic. I do use chemical fertilizer on the, on the, on the ground. I do vaccinate my, my calves. I don't vaccinate the hogs, but I vaccinate the calves for certain uh, viruses, black leg, things like that, and I do deworm. So because of that, I can't sell them as organic. But those are, I feel like, necessary things that I have to do for them to grow without parasites being afflicted with, with parasites. And uh, How many pigs will you be getting? Uh, in January, I have uh, 15 pigs. Uh, I have slaughter dates for 15 pigs. And in March of 2024, I have slaughter dates for 15 pigs. And then I have slaughter dates for about 50 beefs and, yeah, 50 beefs. And I sell those halves or holes, yes.
So and you'll be getting thirty pigs. Thirty pigs and fifty beef. And how old yeah. are the pigs? The pigs, get? the pigs are just weaning age when I get them and and grow them to around 300, 350 pounds, which takes about eight months to do to, to let them naturally grow. So you buy the pigs from another farmer? Yes, I buy the pigs from another farmer. Well, when would you buy the pigs? Well, it's a, an Amish farm up in Kentucky that I buy these. You pigs go pick from. them up. Yeah, I go pick them up and bring them to my place. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So how? Tell us now. What just stays here for a while? So now? We, we've got a cover for this thing. We're going to cover it up, and this is going to stay here just like that, untouched, for uh, about four to five days. Uh, and now, if it does get real warm, like up in the seventy degrees, then because this is not in a cooler, then we are going to hang it in the smokehouse earlier. But when the if the weather stays cool enough, and and. Uh, in five days, we will come here and we will put, cut a little hole in them and we will carry these out and hang them in the smokehouse and smoke them for about 12 hours and then let them rest for 24 hours and smoke them again for 12 hours. What's the hole for, Mark? Uh, the, hole, the hole is to, um, uh, Brother Eddie said, what's the hole for? I should have been a little more explanatory about that, but the hole is to hang it up in the smokehouse. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, and the reason that dad, uh, uh, dad said to smoke them for 12 hours and give them 24 to 48 hours break, that sort of allows the smoke to penetrate into the meat and then give them another smoke. And that's about all the smoke that you'll want, unless you want a really strong flavored smoke, a uh, real strong flavor, and we use hickory wood. Um, but most people, and at least a lot of our family, would not like them smoked that hard. So you let them sit here for five days to absorb the seasoning? Yes, to absorb those seasoning, and that's the curing process of it, yeah. Now some people I've seen, they just put salt on them and hang them, what's that about? Really can't tell you what is the difference between salt. This is a recipe that Dad brought, that's what he grew up with, it's called sugar curing. Of course it has a salt in there as you can see on the recipe. It also has a, the, the, the salt and, and the pepper in there, but Dad's, it was called sugar curing. And that's the same way he did the hams. But I know a lot of the, a lot of the native people around here. They 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 just purely. Sh they would basically do the same thing I did, with just pure straight salt. Yeah. yeah. So this just gives a better flavor. Uh, well, a little bit of a sweet flavor. Yes. Yes. So once they're smoked and it's done smoking, do you have to refrigerate the bacon after that? Well, um, they they can stay hanging in the smokehouse or in a cool, dry place for months. You can hang them up in a cool, dry place for months and just cut a slice off of them and fry them and eat. But the safer way now is, is to, uh, to slice it and, uh, and put it in bags and, uh, and put it in the freezer. It, uh, it, that, that is the safer way. Because one of the things uh, that they do when you hang them up like that, whether it's in a smokehouse, and you hear people talking about hanging them in the attic of the, uh, in the, attic of the barn or somewhere in a cool, dry place, Inevitably, they will uh, mold a little bit, and that mold turns a lot of people off. Even our family members, when they when it molds, you know, like I don't want to eat that mold. You know, it can easily be scraped off, but the meat is actually not hurt. But to keep it from molding, slice it and put it in the freezer, and that way you won't have any mold. Yeah. I've seen hams like at uh, Cracker Barrel that they're just hanging in a bag. Now, what's yep. the deal with that? So they well, those would be cured similar like this, and I'm sure there's some preservatives used on that. Uh, I can't think of what it's called now, but there is something that can be put on that to help prevent the the molding. It is it is a type it's, it's, of it just amazes me that they can, the meat will keep that long yeah. like that. You know yeah. that they don't have to refrigerate it or anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. I, I asked a lot of questions, don't I? That's good. <laughs> we will cover all the topics. Yep. All right, I'll get out of your way here. What are we doing next? The sausage looks like, huh? Uh, They're about ready to do the sausage? Yeah, we're ready to grind. Okay. You guys want something to drink? Well, I That's got some water, water down here. I would take a water, yeah, I guess. We got water right here. Oh, I've got oh. a water right here. Oh, right here's pocket. water. No, I don't need it. Yep. I'll go ahead and... Why don't you put this mic on Nathan and let him... Let him tell what he's no, doing. I don't want that mic. Okay. Boys, I can't talk about that. Well, you talk. You can tell what Nathan's doing. Okay. So what Nathan is doing here now? 
And I think, uh, yeah, wait, let, let's just stop. Let's just stop. He's going to have to do some work to the um, to the grind. We'll, we'll start over here in just a second. Okay. It's, it's not cutting good enough. It's mushing it. And it's, yeah, it doesn't make very good sausage when you do that. So do you add a uh, seasoning and spices yes, to that? Yes, we have a recipe that we're going to be bringing up for so that. Holly's doing that one too? Uh, yes, I'm sure she will. And we'll bring those coals back in here. Hey, Mark, is it the smallest one you guys use? Or is it the next size? Everybody likes that next size better. That small one has a tendency to make it little, make the meat too mushy. Gotcha. So Nathan, you grew up on a farm too? No, no, I, I grew up. I mean, we we did a little bit of farming. I had some uncles at farm that I worked for. So when you when you, how old were you when you met Holly? Twenty eight. Just twenty eight. Yep. So you started coming around the family. What did you think about the family lifestyle? Did something something that just it, it just really it wasn't a whole lot different than like I say the other people that lived around here. It, you know a little bit the Mennonite faith and stuff like that. But you know most Holly's people were kind of away from that by that point. I want to kick this. Off. As far as the farming and the lifestyle you was raised, pretty much the same. And you, you're yeah, from the. I, I was raised on a farm, but I had an uncle that farmed. Right. And I worked for him every summer. And when I was growing up, all the young guys, what we did for money was uh, all day in the summertime, and we would uh, we'd work in the tobacco fields. So we were all used to used to the farming lifestyle. You're all, you're kind of young for tobacco work. That's about all gone, wasn't it? But well, it, it probably all left when I was 16 or 17. That's yeah. when the government started doing whatever it was, buying the bases up and making it a little harder. But now when I was 14, 15 years old, that's what everybody did for just a little cash crop. Every farmer around grew just four or five acres of tobacco. Having problems there with the backing? Yeah, I'm hoping I've just now got it fixed. Okay, we'll hold that, hold that in right in the center. Go through there. That's it. Let's see. Needed a washer or something back there? Well, I had to change up. Change up the <coughs> plates. I think that small one. Let's try that. Redo that. they told us where we got the, the new knives I, I don't know if it's the way it is or not but they told us or told that that if we had to tighten that thing with a stick that it was that it was something else was wrong they said you should only ever hand tighten it that's what they told us there yeah I'm sure that's true can, can you tell us the history of how, how y'all bought the grinder and how long you've had this grinder or anything about it Mark would know more about that it's, it's been around as long as I can remember it's been, really been around a while yeah I don't know I, I would say I don't. I don't know what the history on the, on the grinder is. Dad got it somewhere. Yeah, I want to use this. Uh, I do know that Jonah took it, took the grinder somewhere, and had this box built for it, and the little stand. And now then, the back of that leg has rusted off. And we, we're going to rebuild that and make a stainless steel stand for it. But the grinder has been around 
many, many years, and, and I don't know where Dad came up with it, but but from an auction somewhere. And Dad was... Did, was that the same grinder that was in up there uh, in the top part when we used to butcher up there? No. It was a smaller one. It was okay. a smaller one, Because yes. I, I vaguely, vaguely remember butchering up there. I've not changed it, so this side facing me is the one you wanted. was a several year process. It was a several year process. Putting the store in and then getting that back part under roof there. So. So, how do y'all cook these ribs? Um, you can bake them, grill them, grill them, all different ways, yeah. It doesn't really matter, they're, they're all good. So, you're going to pack them up now and just put them in yes. the refrigerator? Yes, okay. oh, and then in the freezer. And we do have a vacuum sealer that if we're putting up a lot of stuff at one time, we'll probably vacuum seal it. But these, for all of us that's going to split it up, they'll be eating so fast, I don't think you really need to vacuum seal them, do you? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'd say you and used to, they would um, you guys tear those around. up in a hurry. <laughs> I'm just helping to help. I'm not. I'm not got anything in this pig, so no, no dog you in this race. <laughs> well, you've been helping us uh, process it. Hey, watch your mirror. Your mirror on your truck. I thought you were gonna smack into it. You uh, are you good at your paper? Yes, I am. Oh. That ain't. That's not the proper term. That's not videotape. That's digital that's, now. <laughs> right? Yeah, well, that's what everybody's called it forever. I still call it that. Yeah. So he, you're right, though. It's uh, not enough video. There's no tape in there, but that's it's video. Right. We're videoing. That's it. So what are you going to grill? Maybe some ribs. Who knows? Oh, wow. I didn't know this was coming. I didn't either. He surprised me. Uh, you're smiling now, ain't you? Yeah. <laughs> Might get some, some good tasting stuff yet. I'm going to go downstairs and film. All right. See if Nathan got that washer fixed. Well, Nathan usually accomplishes what he sets out to do. Really? Na I, I don't know if you remember I told on the last video Nathan works for me doing barn hauling. Yes. You can count on him. That's just the way it is. <laughs> well, we're going to say we're going to watch him fix this right here. He, he's probably talking bad about me before. Uh, so did. Yeah, uh, I had to butter it up a little bit. Was uh, 
Did you cut up Holly's board to make the washer? No, I had a piece of Teflon at home, a big chunk of it, so I cut it down. But what he's doing now is sharpening the, the plate and the grinder blade. Yeah, it's, it's super simple. You just got to make sure to have a flat. It has to be flat. If it's not, you've, you've made a big mess. So you've got it on a piece of glass there. Yeah. And uh, so you, was you going to be able to use a uh, cutting block to make a washer? Was that what you was going to do? We could have if we wouldn't have had anything else, but it was going to be terrible hard to take a cutting block that big and thin it down. Right, it'll I take had, a while. I, I had a thick piece, so it was a whole lot easier to cut. So you got it made? Yeah, yeah, I'll show it to you in just a second. It's already on there. That's the washer there that he's... And we've so did you cut that that, around, that circle and all of that? Well, you got a drill press that you... How'd you do yeah, that? Yeah, I put a uh, step bit in the drill press to cut this, and I've got a circle cutter, an outside circle cutter to cut that. Way to go. You did a good yeah. job. How about that? He's a handy man, ain't he? Very. Handy man. <laughs> Very. All right, we'll call that good. That's our good side. See how it cleaned that up? It just took all those extra little edges off, and all you want is for that just to be flat, and this is no different. So it's important that it comes out a certain uh, uh, way, the, what do you call it, the grain, or what would you call that the way it comes out? When it comes out through those holes. Yeah, you just want a clean shear, a clean cut. It'll be little old tubes coming out of there, just nice and pretty when you get it right. It makes it a whole lot harder when your meat's not cold, though. When your meat's good and cold, it makes it a whole lot easier. You use a dull blade. How many years did you work for Purdue, Nathan? Mm, 13. So he was maintenance man down at Purdue in, in Monterey. It's a big chicken processing plant. Well, I wasn't a maintenance well, man. I worked in a tool room. I was. Mm -hmm. You fixed the machines or what did you no, do? No, I didn't fix the machines. I just took care of getting the parts and stuff like that ordered and mm -hmm. giving the maintenance man. And, and I, used I, to yeah. before before Nathan was, uh, well, I shouldn't say before Nathan. Back when Nathan was pretty involved uh, or, or working there at Purdue, my dad found out that him and a, and a friend of his, a friend of ours too, but uh, found out that they knew how to, that they could sharpen those uh, grinder blades and plates. And so every time they'd get dull, instead of sending them off to Indiana to the other place we knew of that would do it, they, uh, they'd they get Nathan to... Well, well Brian would take them there. We had a big machine there. Was that before you met Holly or... Yeah, okay. yeah, actually I met Holly through working at Purdue, a good friend of ours, Ryan. He worked there with me and he knew Holly. So he's we call him the matchmaker. He's set up. Well, let's just try this. All right. How fine a grit at sandpaper is that, Nathan? That's 240. Do it real bad. I'll start with about a 100. I okay. worked my way there, but now I really like 400, but I didn't have any of it. Oh, okay. Really puts a, a fine edge on it then, yeah. doesn't it? Let's see, there's the side we sharpen. Get this over. But everything's right, you shouldn't have to tighten that with a with a bar. So give her a try. You we'll want to see try roll along that first. Yeah. Roll along just to keep it from standing all the way up. Do you need that? You need a place to set that, or are you needing something? No. About to start grinding this meat here where we've been deboning. Go ahead, Nathan. Nathan is feeding it in there. He's got. See, it's really a grinding it up there. Doing a good job. That's all, that's all the meat there that we've deboned from the hams and the shoulders and trimmed the bacon and trimmed the pork chops, all of it. Deboning it earlier and now grinding it and we're going to weigh it and mix the seasonings into it and make link sausage. Yeah, it's a grinding good now. Had a little trouble with it this morning, and Nathan came to the rescue and had a, a washer that was wore out in the back of it. So let's uh, talk a little bit about this over here. Earlier we were talking about all the bones and the heads and stuff. Now we've got a couple of extra heads in there and some extra stuff in there, uh, bones in there from a previous butchering. But all that is just in the... In the um, 
uh, in water there and going to boil it until it's done enough to where we can just take your fingers or a knife and just scrape rub the meat off of the bones and then that will be the first step to making liverwurst there's also one liver in all that so we're just gonna let that it's not quite boiling yet but we're gonna let it come to a boil and and uh, it'll take a couple of hours to boil all that to where it's done to uh, just to where it's tender enough then then after after we get the bones out of that water and separate the bones from the meat we're going to use that water and add whole wheat flour cornmeal and salt and pepper and make something that's called scrapple and basically the only meat that it's in it it is the water where the bones were cooked in and we make a thing called scrapple we'll go through all the steps of that a little later boiling it to make cracklings and then we use that sieve <clears throat> so so this recipe is for 10 pounds so um, you want to go I'm gonna scoop lard cracklings and everything out and pour it through this sieve and the lard is going to go in that and going to keep the crackling separate to put in this bowl behind me on the table here and then the girl the blackberry apple and cherry it's too pretty to eat Michelle, there but like I started start saying, it's amazing to me. Yesterday started cleaning those intestines there. And that you can put the same hogs meat back in those intestines for the casing. This and feel for any kind of little bone or hardness in there because they will break the, the grinder. And that right there, a little bit hard. If you want to, you can sort of scrape it a little bit with a knife like that. Well, I wanted, wanted to show you here that this has this has cooled off, and it's, it's like almost like meatloaf, thick. Mm. So good. Mm. One won't do. I gotta have another. Now you, now you gotta mix this other stuff. Huh?